Hello, my name is Justin Sherman. You must be watching this video because you're one of the selected few students who gets to use the live video production system. So we're gonna start at the very beginning with the cameras. This is one of three cameras that we'll be using for the live show. We have three different points to patch in the cameras, the ClearCom communication devices and any audio inputs we want, which are right here, over here, and back there. All three of the cameras that you use for live broadcast will have cables that look just like this. This is a bundle of three different cables. You have video output right here. This is what's known as an S-video connector. You have very familiar power cable, which is for the camera itself, because it doesn't run off of battery. And what looks like a mic cable. This is actually a mic cable, but it's being used in this system for the ClearCom communication system. So all three of these things need to get plugged in on every single camera in order for the system to work in its entirety. So let's go do that now. So first we're going to deal with power. This is a simple one. And we're good. Next we're going to plug in the ClearCom, which looks just like a mic connector because it is. The ClearCom boxes are two male XLR style jacks labeled ICM. For reasons unbeknownst to me, only the top one works, and the second one, the one on the bottom, doesn't do anything. So we heard that nice little click, and it's all set. And lastly, we have the video output. You need a special cable to actually use the video coming out of the cameras. You need an S-video coupler, so basically a little metal barrel which is taped onto the cable here that allows you to plug two male S-video connectors into each other. We also have these little short cables, we have three of them, that go from S-video male to what Mr. Honeycutt likes to call the pigtail, which is a yellow cable and a white cable with two kind of funky looking coax connectors on here called BNC. What happens is there's a box right here, right next to the ClearCom, that says, over here it says A1, A2, and A3. What that means is that this is the box A, and 1, 2, and 3 are the separate camera inputs. So this being camera B, because it's in the middle of the room, we're going to use input 2. It's really up to you, but whatever makes the most sense is probably what you should go with. You always want to plug the yellow one in on top, and what's important is when you put it in, it only fits in one way, and then it turns exactly a quarter twist clockwise to lock in. So now this isn't going anywhere. Once both of these connectors are in, we want to carefully plug the S-video connector into the coupler. Be really careful with these. These break very easily and they're a pain to fix. So depending on where this is, you might actually want to tape this in so it doesn't fall out or get stepped on. But for the purposes of the demonstration, it's pretty much good. So now we're going to go set up the other cameras and then meet back at the switcher to see what's next. All right, right here you see the Panasonic switcher. This device right here and this whole system all over in front of me is um, where all four of the video feeds, so the three cameras and a fourth feed, which we'll talk about later, all come into one place and they all go into the switcher. The idea is to allow whoever's operating the switcher to literally switch between the four different video sources and choose which one is currently going to go onto either air or to recording or both in most cases. Um, we also have the tape deck right here, which is where the recording of the program is done. This is a mini DV tape deck right here, and it will be previewed on one of these monitors. And on this side, we have our communication systems, ClearCom. So with this headset, and either this mic or this mic, depending on which one you prefer, you can communicate with everyone else who are on the cameras and give them direction during the show. Uh, if they have any problems with their camera or any sort of equipment, they can talk about that too. We can figure that out over communication uh, system without disrupting the performance at all. All right, so let's turn it all on. Power switch down here controls just about everything. So that nice buzz and hum tells us that everything's working. Now, if we look right now, 
we have uh, what look like security cameras over here. These are actually uh, video cameras that are used for the Board of Ed meetings in the cafeteria, but we don't want those. We want to um, we want to go to the sources from the studio. So what we need to do is switch it over here. These devices do a lot of different things. The main two features that they have that you'll be using are the ability to switch between the cameras in the cafeteria and the cameras here, and the ability to change color over here. Be very careful with these settings though. So over here, we're going to push this button right here to switch over our sources. Now, it looks like right now we don't have anything coming in through the cameras. Um, so we're going to have to go to the back room and make sure that everything's patched correctly. And um, then we should get all three cameras up in here. Come on, it's an adventure. So right over here are two of the most integral pieces of equipment in this whole system. These, are, these have the potential to cause a lot of damage if they're mishandled, so be very, very careful in patching and double check all your numbers before you commit any patches into these. So, down here is a little sheet that Mike Phyllis made up for us. It has a list of all the sources, so a source would be like a camera, um, and then all the destinations. So a destination, for example, which is on this sheet back here, a destination might be input number one into the switcher, or input two into the switcher, or three or four. So there are multiple packets of these, and there are two different kinds of inputs. This is where it gets really tricky. There are what are known as YC inputs, which include anything that is an S video connector or one of the yellow and white cables. If you look closely, it says Y and C on there. And then there's what's called composite video. Composite video is the standard video you're used to under TV, like the yellow, white, and red. The yellow there is the only video feed on that. That's composite because it's just one cable for the video. So where this gets tricky is that this piece of equipment right down here handles both kinds of video. And both the composite and the YC use the same numbers for sources and destinations as each other. So over here, we have two different buttons differentiating which one you want to deal with. So let me give you an example. It might be easier that way. Let's say that we have studio camera jack A2. That's our camera B, if you remember from earlier in the video. So it says right here that that source, first of all, it's a YC source, as we talked about, and it is number two. It's, it's source two. So what we're going to do is, as this sheet says right up here, we're going to push the button labeled in, and now all of the numbers have lit up for us, and we're going to type in the input number, or the source number. So we push 2. Now we're going to push out and tell it where to go. And we're going to take a look at this. And now this is a little cryptic, but it makes sense. The control room TBC is basically code for those machines to the right that allow you to switch video and change color. And those go straight into the switcher. So you want to assign it to the TBC. So because it's camera B, we're going to put it into input 2. A will be 1, B will be 2, C will be 3. So that's destination 2. So we've pushed out already, and now we push 2. Now, this is the really important part. Because it's YC, we have to push SVID take. YC and SVID, or SVideo, are basically the same thing. So if we push video take here, it's going to think that the source and destination were actually composite video rather than YC. And so you can put in the complete right numbers and then push one wrong button and all of a sudden things are patched in a very strange way and you're not quite sure why. So it's really important to double check and maybe even triple check if you're using SVID or composite before you push the button. So I know that uh, we're using C2, so as camera C. So let's see, on our sheet, C2 is labeled as eight. So input eight, and then output. We're gonna use TBC three. 
So TBC3 on the sheet is 4. So we push out 4. And as I said, the most important part, SVID take. All right, so now the camera should be properly assigned. And we should be able to get those on the switcher now. We go back into the control room and check on that. So let's go. As you can see, all three of the cameras are focused on interesting posters throughout the room. All of them are on different posters so that we can make sure that we're getting all three cameras and not a duplicate somehow. That can happen with the, uh, the matrix switcher. Um, and we're going to just make sure that all three of the cameras are coming into the switcher separately, into the right inputs, and also make sure that the ClearCom system is all set up and working properly.